the viola. I have an interesting story about the viola. In 1935, my father, Alfred Newman, was working at United Artists, and he was trying to find a better way to synchronize the music to the picture. Up to then, there had been what was called a sweep hand clock, which was a big clock with a very large second hand, and you would write the timings in your score, and you would attempt to synchronize with it. Alfred Newman wanted to find a more precise way to do it, and he wanted it to be more of a metaphor of conducting in a pit as an opera conductor or a show conductor, a Broadway conductor, which is where he and Max Steiner came from. So he in, they invented this system that was called the Newman system, where there were what were called streamers, which was a line that went across, and flutters and punches that you put in various places that made it easier for you to synchronize your music while looking at your musicians or looking up at the film, which would be in the back of the room where the, where the orchestra was. The funny thing about it is that it was developed and designed by a viola player, one of the principal viola players in the orchestra of the time. So I think the viola is the middle instrument in the string section. If you've, you've got your violins, You've got your viola, which is about an octave lower. It doesn't have quite the range of a violin. Then you have cello, which has a very low bar baritone range and tenor range and the bass, which is low. But the, the viola is kind of in the middle all the time. Um, I think you, if, if you know your music history at all, that the viola was the instrument that Mozart liked to play when he was playing string quartets because you were kind of in the middle of the, of the whole thing. Um, violas can also be used high. Um, a lot of times in um, film music, violas are used in a, in a kind of tenor uh, alto range, I would say. So let's dive into the viola a bit. The viola construction is identical to the violin except for the size. The bow is made of a wooden rod with horsehair stretched between the two ends. To adjust the tension of the hair, a screw is attached. Rosin is applied to the hair to increase friction. Producing a tone on the viola is similar to the other instruments in the string section. The strings are played with the bow or picked with the fingers. The vibrating string will be amplified by the body. There's hardly any orchestral work without violas or without strings. They have been the foundation of the orchestra ever since the Baroque period up to today. Whether it is in a chamber orchestra or a large symphony orchestra, except of course, special ensembles. The viola has different tasks within the orchestra. It is frequently used for accompaniment and can play or hold rhythmic figures and repetitions, as well as long chords, practically for an unlimited time. When the viola takes on leading lines or melodies, it can play them either in one position, low, middle, or high, or over a wider range of notes. Like the violins, it can play very fast figures over several bars. Like all strings, there are multiple players within the orchestra. There are usually between three and 12 viola players, depending on the size of the orchestra. The range of the viola is from C3 to A6, or C2 to A5, after the MIDI definition used in our sample instruments. Higher passages are commonly found only in solo parts. 
The viola is used more as an accompaniment instrument due to its darker and somewhat nasal sound compared to the violin. When the viola takes over the melody, it usually has a sad, muted, or sometimes slightly humorous or even grotesque character. A famous viola solo is the ballad of the role of Entchen in the opera Du Freischutz by Karl Maria von Weber, where a comic touching scene is described, or in pieces illustrating tragic comic heroes like Don Quixote by Richard Strauss. Now let's take a look at the main playing techniques of the viola. Basically, we differentiate between left hand and right hand techniques. Moving the left hand while holding a note produces slight variations in pitch and volume. This technique is called vibrato. There are different stages of intensity. Non-vibrato produces a flat and expressionless tone. The very common poco vibrato is the most used one in 2D passages. Vibrato espressivo is used for solos or melodic lines, and the molto vibrato creates an exaggerated effect. By changing the bow direction on every single note without leaving the strings, the notes can be separated without sounding short, which is what we call détaché. A series of short strokes is called a staccato. There are the strong staccato, where the bow rests on the string between the strokes, and the flying staccato where the bow is lifted from the string between the notes. Spiccato is really détaché for short notes, where the bow changes direction on every note. This technique produces a jumping of the bow due to its elasticity. In ricochet, the player throws the bow on the string and the bow jumps several times, bouncing off the string. It can be used for playing just a single note several times or to play a scale. When we play near the bridge of the instrument, a brighter, more glassy, shrill, and thin tone will be produced. This is called ponticello. It sounds scary, very cold, and can be played from pianissimo to fortissimo. Soltasto is the opposite of ponticello technique. This is where the string is played near the fingerboard. A warmer and softer sound is produced. The dynamic is limited here up to a warm forte. When any open string is played while a finger touches it lightly on one of its nodes, where partial vibrations are developed, the corresponding overtone appears creating natural harmonics. This effect can be produced artificially as well by playing a note, touching the string on the right spot simultaneously. It can be played from pianissimo to mezzo forte.
If the string is plucked with a single finger instead of using a bow stroke, that is called pizzicato. For the Bartok pizzicato, the string is plucked harder with two fingers, so the string bounces against the fingerboard. The sound is more percussive than the regular pizzicato and has a buzzing nature to it. Pizzicato can be played from pianissimo to forte, Bartok pizzicato from mezzo forte up to fortissimo. Thanks for watching this video about the viola. Please come back for more.